I think we should all be able to realize that in order to grow in any dimension of life, we have to go through some kind of struggle of resistance, which is apparently not obvious to everyone. So let's start by considering some examples. How about if you want to learn something new, you have to work at acquiring that knowledge, the knowledge that you don't currently have. You have to study materials and go to lectures and sometimes even take tests to assess how well you have done in achieving your goals and how much more work is needed to get there. If you wanna get in shape, if you wanna get fit, you literally have to position your muscles against some kind of counter force or weight so that through that tension, they will grow stronger. If you wanna learn how to drive, you have to get behind the wheel while someone else is watching you and struggle to get the machine to work as it's intended while doing something completely unfamiliar and unnatural to your understanding and your muscle memory, all of which accumulates to a fairly stressful situation, which anybody who's learned how to drive can attest to. All of which is to say that growth requires us to be uncomfortable as we come up against forces that will resist us in the process of that growth. Think of growth like an invasion of yourself into new dimensions, new territories of life. And like anything, as soon as you start to push your way into something, you're going to face resistance. So growth doesn't come easily or without cost. And growth in conformity with the truth, that is acquiring understanding of truth and being yourself conformed to the truth, will produce this same kind of pattern and the same effect. In fact, I'd argue that anything unfamiliar to us can make us uncomfortable. If you're out of shape, exercising is an unfamiliar discomfort. If you're ignorant, then education is an unfamiliar discomfort. I think you get the idea. Growing in your understanding of the truth necessarily means being introduced to the unfamiliar. And because it's unfamiliar, it will be difficult to navigate and negotiate, which will feel like a struggle at the end of the day. Imagine like going to a new place and trying to navigate your way around. It will make you feel exposed, um, vulnerable, and it will strip you of your sense of self-sufficiency because you're out of your comfort zone and you're out of the familiar territory in which you can comfortably navigate yourself. And if Christianity is true, and I'm addressing Christians in this video, so I hope that regardless of your particular persuasions within the church, we should be able to find some agreement there, this, this idea that Christianity is true. And if you and I still need to grow to some degree in the truth, in other words, we haven't, we haven't learned everything there is to learn yet, then by definition, the Christian creed and disciplines should make us uncomfortable. So then we shouldn't be surprised as we adopt these practices and study these teachings, if at times they make us uncomfortable, even really uncomfortable. If they didn't, they wouldn't be true because this is what the truth does to those who are not completely fully conformed to it. So to be a Christian means to be able to persist in that discomfort uh, through our whole lives. It's a lifetime process. As soon as you've adapted to some teaching or practice that used to make you uncomfortable, in other words, you've adjusted to it, you should move on to applying the next one that remains unfamiliar to you. It's a constant exercise of discipleship in the new and the unfamiliar. But along the way, there will be a temptation and a trap set for us at every interval because we tend towards the easy. We don't like discomfort and struggle. And so there will be this temptation which promises all that we want in pursuit of the truth, but with none of the adversity. We might call this liberal Christianity. This current within the church tells us that we can reform the creed and its practices to suit our pre-existing preferences, thereby abolishing the struggle and making us feel easy and comfortable along the way. Or we can just simply pick and choose the practices and, and beliefs that we like and then disregard the ones that we don't like and that make us uncomfortable. But remember, unless we ourselves are master, or we're, we have full mastery over the truth, uh, we should expect to be made uncomfortable because that's what the truth does to those who still have some measure of growth to realize. Liberal Christianity empties the faith of its adversity while still promising the results that can only come through that now 
evacuated adversity. It's like someone working out on an exercise machine with no weight resistance. Sure, it's comfortable and easy, but it's not going to help the person grow in the ways that they want. And boy, would it be tempting if some fitness guru showed up in that exact moment when your struggle is the hardest and insisted that you could get all the results that you wanted without ever actually having to strain yourself in the process. And if none of that is convincing to you, how about the fact that everywhere, everywhere that liberal Christianity has been tried, it has led to decline and death for the community or the tradition that has adopted it. This is ludicrously undeniable at this point and, and I would say inexcusable for anyone who refuses to admit it. Like I can excuse people for thinking in theory, maybe back at the beginning of the 20th century, that uh, this seductive approach to Christianity uh, might be a good thing. But now that this experiment has been thoroughly tried and attempted by multiple formerly tenacious denominations um, and produced nothing but ruin for those same communities, uh, there's no longer any excuse for thinking that this will actually lead to some kind of renewal in the churches that haven't already attempted it. At this point, it's no longer a matter of theory, but of observable fact. You just have to look at the record, which is why attempting to advance this kind of I would argue counterfeit Christianity is inexcusable. The only possible reason that someone would want to uh, is in the interest of the sabotage of the church. But there is something novel in today's approach to trying to manipulate the message of the church to suit some other agenda that originates somewhere outside of the church. In the past, it was done under the banner of liberty, freedom, and maybe even progress. But today, it's advanced under the banner of inclusion and tolerance and welcome. But if we make inclusion the supreme virtue that conditions all others, then the church will find itself saddled with, I would hope, an unwanted comparison. Because the only place in which unconditioned inclusivity and the slogan, all are welcome, has been fully realized is in hell. Hell does not discriminate or exclude anyone. People of all walks of life and all proclivities are welcome there. And then they despair for it. Any good society or community is one that discriminates between good and evil. And while unjust discrimination should always be decried, just discrimination should only not be avoided, but it should be encouraged while always extending the offer of reconciliation and mercy wherever it can be. If people refuse to repent and place their trust in Christ, his teachings, his example, and his redemptive work, then they don't want inclusion. They want to drag the church down to the level that they already exist at rather than be elevated to Christ's. And that kind of inclusion is a recipe for, of disaster for everyone involved. Hey, thanks for watching. The reason I can continue making content like this is because of the generous support of my viewers. If you are able to support the work I'm doing, there are a couple of ways you can do that. By donating through my website or by joining my online community, The Reinforcements. Both can be done by visiting brianholdsworth.ca. The .ca because that's how we internet in Canada. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, thanks for watching.